the Q collar. Uh, this is a device that goes around the neck and puts a mild compression on the jugular vein. And it was it was being sold by Bauer uh, last year and the year before, and it was marketed as a product called the NeuroShield. Since then, Bauer has dropped it from their product line, but the original uh, manufacturers, the original people with the patent on it, have started reselling it under its original name, which is the Q Collar. And the idea is that the brain is moving inside of the skull. So putting a helmet on, for example, is not going to stop the brain from moving inside of the skull, which is why helmets don't prevent concussions. Because you could put whatever you want out here, the brain is still going to move inside of the head. And that's the whole thing. The idea behind the cue collar is to compress the jugular vein to reduce the amount of blood that can leave the skull. So you're actually keeping more blood and more volume inside the brain itself. So you're creating a back pressure in the brain. So essentially you have more fluid in there. And the idea is that more fluid can create a bigger cushion or a better cushion of the brain itself. So that's the theory, right? We're not getting anywhere by protecting the outside of the head. So let's see if we can protect the brain from the inside. And by doing this, or by compressing the jugular vein, we're not allowing as much blood to come back. So we're creating this back pressure. So the theory is plausible. It makes sense. And there's done original studies using animals that found that um, you know they were able to better tolerate um, high impact stress, right? There was a reduction in their, the injuries that they would see afterwards. So when Bauer was doing this a couple years ago, they were very, 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 very careful to, to not suggest that it pre prevented concussion. And what they would say, they said something that sounds like it protects the structural integrity of the brain during contact sports, which actually means nothing. But it sounds a lot like it prevents concussions. And that's ultimately what the message is to the public. But Bauer gets away from it from a legal perspective because they don't actually say that it prevents concussions. But everyone in the world interprets it as a concussion prevention tool, okay? Why can't they just come out and say that it prevents concussions? Well, because the device has never actually been shown to prevent concussions. The research that's been done using the device has typically been done where they'll have people undergo what's called a diffusion tensor image scan at the start of the season. Then half the group will wear this device throughout the season as they go through hockey, soccer, football, whatever it may be. And then at the end of the season, they'll give everyone a diffusion tensor image scan and they'll look for differences between the two groups. Diffusion tensor scans are, um, it's an MRI type of machine and it measures the diffusion of water molecules in axons or in brain tissue. Now if you think about an axon as a long, you know, tube-like structure, inside of that you have these things called neurofilaments and microtubules. Now what they do is transport things from you know one end of the axon to the other. So it's kind of the communication with inside each brain cell. And water will diffuse along the axon. So typically will water should diffuse in the direction of the axon. So it's parallel to the axon. And if there's damage to the axon, it it will allow water to diffuse perpendicular to the axon. So the theory is if you see water diffusing in a way that's kind of haphazard and not in line with the axon tissue, the idea is that maybe there's damage to the structural integrity of the axon itself. Because now you have water leaking out. So rather than water going this way, it's now going this way, which potentially shows that there's damage to the outer part of the axon or whatever. So the problem with diffusion tensor imaging is that we actually don't know what we're looking at. They found diffusion tensor imaging findings in people with low socioeconomic status, people with major depression, people with post-traumatic stress disorder, people with ADHD, people with all sorts of different things will show deficits in diffusion tensor imaging with no trauma whatsoever. So 
a lot of the studies are looking at this saying, okay, well, if there's damage or if there's, you know, we're finding DTI findings, that's related to concussion. And the research has actually shown that we can't really rely on diffuser tensor imaging to make any type of assumptions or recommendations because we don't actually know what it is or what it means. The studies that have been done with the Q call are what they do is they'll take a group of athletes and put them through a diffusion tensor scan. We don't know what it is. They put them through it. Here we go. Here's their pre-season scores. Then half the group gets this device, half the other half doesn't wear it. Then they go through an entire season of playing contact sports. No concussions happen. So in any of these studies, they don't have any concussions that occur. So these are all people that are non-concussed. At the end of the season, they put them through their diffusion tensor scans again. Then what they do is they say, what did the group that was wearing this collar look like? And what did the group that was not wearing this collar look like? And what they find uh, across these studies is that the group that was wearing the collar has less changes from preseason to postseason than the group that wasn't. So what they're saying is that the collar itself prevented all the sub-concussive impacts, all the little hits, from creating damage because the brain was better protected. But because we don't know what diffusion tensors looking at, because we don't know what we're actually seeing, we can't actually make the comment or judgment that the cue caller protected the brain in any way. But that's the theory. So I think from a whole, the idea itself has potential, right? I think we need to start thinking about something other than a helmet, right? We know that you can wrap whatever you want on the outside of the head. The helmet is to designed to prevent skull fracture. That's the purpose of a helmet, not to prevent concussion. And in fact, it shows that it really doesn't prevent concussion. So we have to think about something differently. So I think the idea and the concept makes sense. I think that the research to date is extremely limited, but um, it, it has potential. I think that we need to study it a little better. I would suggest uh, to the researchers studying this, what would be definitive for me would be put the collar on half the people and put have half the people not wear the collar but then go out and put instruments in the helmet to measure acceleration. So now you're actually measuring acceleration values. So then what you can do is follow these groups over a period of a few years, see who gets concussed and who doesn't, and at what forces they're getting concussions. Because if you see that concussions are happening, and typically these studies show concussions happen in a range of 70 to 120 Gs, if you see the group wearing the cue collars taking hits up to 70 to 120 Gs and they're not having a concussion, that's showing that you're able to better tolerate extreme forces without having concussion injury. That would be a little bit better of a study for me. And so far they haven't done that, and I don't know if that's on the horizon or anything like that, but so far they haven't done it. So to me there's also, because you're compressing the jugular vein, you're potentially creating issues going on. So think about if you have an undiagnosed aneurysm, right, which is a weakening or a ballooning of one of the arteries in your brain, and all of a sudden you put a back pressure on that and then you go out and exert yourself. What's that going to do to that little aneurysm? Well, it's going to expand it even more and potentially create a dangerous scenario. So I think that there's certain risks and I wouldn't necessarily be running out to buy one until the evidence actually shows that it's going to be protective for concussion, which it currently does not. So at this point, we're talking about an idea or concept that's interesting, um, potentially a bit of a gimmick, maybe beneficial. But we have no idea, and I think there's certain things like risks that have to be ruled out before I would recommend doing it.